This is a demonstration that we use for school children and, and others about um, explaining the sort of research I do. So there is a, a little cell here where, and this is a television camera which goes on big picture up here. Now the important thing is that this is not a, a video. So if you look, if I shake the table, the whole thing shakes. And what is actually in here in the picture, there is a liquid sealed into a cell with gas above it, the vapour, like it could be water and steam, it's not water but it's similar. So if we start heating this, what did you do just then? I just flicked this switch mm -hmm. and switched on the heater so the temperature you can see is going up and as the temperature goes up this begins to boil. So you can see it begins to boil and as it boils material goes from the liquid into the gas and as it goes into the gas, the gas gets denser because it can't escape, it's a sealed cell, but the liquid, because it's being heated, expands. So this becomes less dense, that becomes denser, and eventually they become the same density, and the line in between it completely disappears. So you can see it's almost gone now, and what happens is that you then have a gas which has about half the density of the liquid, and this is a so-called supercritical fluid. And I first saw this demonstration, or one similar to this, about 20 years ago, and I was completely hooked. And I've been researching on this ever since. Now it's even more fun if you cool it down. So if I flick the switch, which starts it cooling, and the temperature starts dropping, it takes a bit of time because we've just been heating it. But, so you can see the temperature's beginning to go down. There, it's now going down quite well. And as you go up here, what, if you look, imagine now we have a gas. It's a bit cloudy because there's some glue dissolved in here, but ignore the cloudiness. And what we've got here is a gas. And as we cool it down, it will suddenly separate again into a liquid and <coughs> a gas. And the bubbles of the gas will go upwards and the bubble droplets of liquid, because they're denser, will go down. So you can see it's just about to go now goes at 45 degrees and you get a sort of storm and the I demonstrate this sometimes several times a day if I have lots of visitors and I still get hooked on this. Now if you're very um, observant you'll see there now appears to be less liquid than there was before because there's still droplets of liquids coming down here and so I keep this in my office really for two reasons. One is because there's nowhere else to put it. And the other reason is because I use it when I'm interviewing people. And so if somebody sees this and goes, wow, I know there's somebody to work with me. If they look a bit bored and keep quiet like you've done, uh, then I would suggest they should go and work with somebody else. <laughs> and <laughs> And as I said, we first did this experiment in the lab <coughs> tw um, 20 years ago. I mean, it's a well-known effect, but it was the first time I'd seen it 20 years ago. Now we have really quite a large number of my colleagues are working on this right across the university and beyond. Well, the reason it's important is because carbon dioxide um, is totally non-poisonous. And so, for example, if you're trying to make materials for use in the medical profession to put in people's bodies and so on, if you make them using carbon dioxide as a solvent, you don't put anything toxic or poison into the body. Whereas if you use conventional solvents, they often have impurities or they can be poisonous themselves.